How's it going guys? My name's Honcho and welcome to another squad video. We finally have it. PLA is now in game and ready to fight. And I thought it would be a good idea to show you all exactly what this faction has to offer from all of the vehicles, infantry kits, command assets and emplacements. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more squad guides, gameplay and update videos. Okay, so we will start this out with the vehicles and boy are these going to shake things up because everything is just so unique. The new weapon systems combined with new sounds is going to give us all a lot to learn both using them and going up against them. The first vehicle we will look into is the ZTZ-99 main battle tank which features a 125mm auto-loading cannon and a remote command turret using the QJC-88 torf i7 by 108 machine gun. This tank does feel a bit similar to the T-72, especially to drive, maybe a bit on the heavier side as it seems a bit slower to stop, but other than that it's certainly a smooth drive. You do get an extra viewport on the right hand side to look out of, but not on the left. It is business as usual for the tank driver though, with the standard instruments to keep an eye on and plenty of smoke to be deployed when needed. Now though, the gunner seat is a completely unique experience from all other tanks. No longer will you have to work out bore offset in CQB situations as your sight is smack bang above the barrel. The sight picture is simple to read with AP being central, heat being on the left and coax on the right. This thing also gets high explosive fragmentation as well, which is really good for anti-infantry. I think shooting things at mid to long range may be a bit of a pain as the brightness of the red can be a bit intrusive, but on the whole it feels really nice to use, especially for the coax when you aren't zoomed in. It is worth noting though that the coax will clip on the tank's rear, but the main gun does not. Now the command seat with the QJC is also a really nice weapon to use. Fully stabilised with 360 degrees of travel, albeit a bit choppy when firing, but it feels really strong and it shoots past 1600 metres really effectively and with real ease. It only has 450 rounds and you cannot reload this independently, you have to go back to a rep station to top up again, so a bit similar to the Crow's 50 on top of the Abrams. Okay, on to the next vehicle and this is where things really start to become fun. The ZBD-04A infantry fighting vehicle comes with quite a few options to engage with as it features a 30mm auto cannon and a 100mm cannon with an autoloader. At first glance it's a bit of a cross between a BMP-3 and a Bradley but maintains a fairly low profile somewhere between a BMP-2 and a Warrior. To drive, you can feel this vehicle's weight under acceleration and stopping, but for a tracked vehicle it's relatively nimble. Driver's view is good with two viewports aside of the central one. The gunner sight works with a 30mm cannon being central to the picture and boy can this thing shoot at range. This thing will shoot out to 1000 meters better than a tank and that's both AP and HE. It has three stages of zoom but the third stage is only really viable for the 30mm. Now the 100mm is on the right side of the optic and its main ammo is high explosive fragmentation, meaning this will do pretty much nothing to armoured vehicles but that 4 second autoloader does work pumping these rounds out. And that's where this vehicle's ace card lays, because it can fire 3 laser guided ATGMs from the cannon. So dependent on the damage values of the 30mm and these three missiles, it can stand a very good chance of ambushing and wiping a tank off the map. The coax is a standard 5.8mm and is on the left of the sight picture and the command turret is fully stabilised with 360 degrees of rotation. Oh, and it can carry infantry. Now for that wheelie boy, the ZBL-08 which features a 30mm auto cannon, but this variant also features two HJ-73C ATGMs. Yes, you heard me, a wheeled APC with ATGMs. 
The driving experience is also new on this vehicle with a narrower field of view as it is through a camera, but you can turn this camera through 120 degrees. Similar speeds to the BTR series and with approximate weight of a striker, this will make a fun vehicle, especially in an urban environment. Its main armament being the 30mm, again it has incredible muzzle velocity and can really put rounds down range. High explosive doesn't seem to travel as far as the ZBD-04. As for those two missiles, you can fire them off within seconds of each other, but you can only control one at a time. I genuinely feel like this vehicle is going to be lethal in the right hands. Commander's view again has full 360 degrees of rotation while stabilised and as usual can carry a full squad of infantry over land and water. Now for the light vehicles and for this we get the CSK-131 to play with. Very similar to the Tiger that Russia uses, only these feel a tad slower and can't carry as much infantry. We get one with the QBJ-89 remote turret, one QBJ-89 open top, another open top but with the QJY-88 machine gun, but the most dangerous of all will be this one, with the HJ-8 ATGM. This specific CSK can carry a total of 6 infantry, 300 ammo to resupply from, and a total of six wire-guided HJ-8L high-explosive anti-tank missiles. The optic is really nice and clean to read, and for an ATGM is very quick to reload. However, the gunner has absolutely no protection, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Honestly, this is just going to be an uber for lats and hats. PLA also get another unique feature in the shape of two armed CTM-131 transport trucks. Basically just a logistics truck but with a QBJ-89 12.7 mounted on the roof and a QYJ-88 machine gun on the other. You know, I feel a community challenge coming on here, something like first person to take a BTR or a BMP out of one of these, that will be amazing. The Logi is a CTM-131 carrying the usual amount of ammo and construction that all Logis carry, despite being a bit shorter than most, but with it being a crew cab, seats 5 inside and 5 on the outside. Aesthetically, they do remind me a bit of the Mercedes Unimog. And finally for vehicles, the transport helicopter is the Z-8G, and I have to say this thing looks absolutely massive but fantastic. Six blades on the top and five on the tail, this chopper is really quick off the mark and really quick to fly, and if you haven't noticed, it has no door gunners. The tail and side doors do close to enclose all occupants, so they should be safe from small arms fire. It carries a total of 1500 points of ammo or construction, with the default being 900 ammo and 600 construct. It does look like it will seat more occupants than the other helis, but I, have, I haven't been able to fully find out, as I don't have that many friends. Command asset wise, the PLA gets the same 152mm creeping and static artillery barrages, but the airstrike is the JH-7A rocket airstrike, and from the looks of it, it's different from the traditional SU strike and A-10 strikes that we already get. Okay. It's time to move on to the infantry kits. The basic rifle that we will have to use is the QBZ-95, which as you can see is a bullpup. It can be fired in semi, three round burst and fully automatic. Iron sights aren't the most offensive I have ever seen, but I can't help but feel this is like some really odd M4 AK hybrid that's not even the AK guy himself would have put together. I think it's the M4 style carry handle with the banana mag that does it for me. Iron sights can be ranged up to 300 meters. It sounds really punchy and actually is quite controllable in semi and full auto. First, however, it does seem to have a hell of a kick to it. Your sidearm is the QSZ-92, which looks somewhat familiar to the Glock 17 and the old reliable 1911. It's got a really nice rate of fire and pretty snappy reload time too. If it's based on the Glock 17, I wonder if it suffers from limp wrist jamming. Actually. I wonder if they'll ever implement weapon malfunctions for normal weaponry. Your tactical stabbing device is the QNL95 bayonet, and I actually wish we could run these as bayonets, as well as a combat knife. 
the grenade of choice is a Type 86P. And you get the DSF-161 for your smoke grenades. Bandages are same old, same old, but your binoculars, well these things are very, very snazzy. These Type 95 field binoculars look like they are straight out of Wish.com. I honestly cannot stop chuckling when I see these. Man, that is a bold colour choice. It runs the usual stadiometric rangefinder, which is at 1.7 metres tall, which is your average male height. Your rallies display the PLA camo on them. I have to admit, I really do like the Chinese camo. It would definitely be a skin I would buy on CSGO. Now for alternative optics, on the 95 you get a hollow sight, aptly named hollow sight. Unfortunately, it's slapped on top of the carry handle like some noob on Tarkov because they can't afford a good Picatinny rail. But honestly, whilst this hollow is a really nice clear sight, I just cannot get over how scuffed this is. That height over bore is going to catch a lot of people out. Its default range is 50 meters and it cannot be ranged any higher, but no surprising with that sight height. Now the range optic is the YMA600, which to me looks like it's been heavily influenced by the Russian PSO. It cannot be adjusted and it is zeroed to 100 meters. The automatic rifleman kits runs the QBJ95, both with iron sights and the YMA600. They have a really good rate of fire and are surprisingly controllable even without the bipod. I would demonstrate the bipod here, but it's kind of bugged in this build OWI have kindly allowed me to play on. Grenadier gets the QLG10 launcher strapped to their QBZ95, and these can be fired up to 400 meters. The smokes you get are white, blue and red. Light anti-tank uses the DZJ08. The optic I'm still trying to fully figure out, so feel free to educate me in the comment section. But this thing doesn't seem to want to fire much further than 300 meters. Heavy AT is the PF98. You get one tandem and one high explosive incendiary. Tandem is ranged on the left of the optic and incendiary on the right. And yes, that scope does say 1600 meters. It also has a laser range finder displayed above, but as soon as you hold left shift to aim in, you can no longer see it. This launcher is absolutely terrifying due to the laser range finder and the actual range it can fire to. Also, it is completely deafening when you fire this thing. Mark's meme is armed with the QBU-88, paired up with 10 round mags and 0 to 400 meters at default. This thing is going to be a fun kit to use, but that zeroing will catch out a lot of people who aren't paying attention. Machine Gunner uses the QJY-88, paired with the YMA-95 optic. This is a lovely clear sight, and unlike most MG kits, is actually zeroed to 100 meters. Fire rate is similar to the PKP, and this thing is relatively easy to control. Combat Engineers gets the Type 72 anti-tank mine, and these are going to be a little harder to spot than most of the other factions due to being darker in colour. Oh, and their C4 only has a 30 second fuse timer. That's going to be interesting. All in all, they have a unique feel. I'm certainly interested to see how they stack up against their counterparts. CQB situations, I feel, will be a strong point for them, but with this game, you just never know. And finally, the M placements PLA get all display their unique camo, which will be something to get used to spotting. Machine Gun Bunkers uses the QBZ89 with this wild optic. And again, I'm sure someone can explain what all of that means, but right now, from what I can tell, you need to be using the right hand side of the scale. As for ATGMs, this is where things get really wild. The HJ-8L launcher is going to be a serious problem for enemy armor. The reload speed on this is just insane. No, this footage isn't sped up. That's how fast you can send these things down range. Overall, I'm super excited to get my teeth into this faction, both playing as them and playing against them. Squad has needed a new Red 4 faction for a long time, and PLA is the perfect candidate for it. What are you most excited to use with this faction, and who do you think would be the perfect faction to add next? Thank you all for watching, take care, and I'll catch you in the next video.